Welcome uh, to our 32nd uh, awards night presentation. It's really nice to uh, finally be back doing this in person. Uh, you know, it uh, was hard the last two years uh, with not being able to see everybody uh, and, and uh, grant them and give them their awards. Uh, so obviously a lot has happened over the last two years. Since we haven't met, I thought I would uh, go over some of the accomplishments that CSF of Marlboro has been able to do. Um, one, one thing that we did over the last two years is we've started a relationship with uh, Apex. Uh, they're new, new to the, the city, and um, with them, uh, they last year uh, started donating for three $1,000 scholarships, Apex, 110 Grill, and Aviva. So that, that's been great in adding to uh, the total number of scholarships that we've been able to award. They've also made a strong commitment to help us with fundraising. Uh, so in the last year, uh, Aviva partnered uh, with us to do a gift basket raffle that we had uh, right uh, around Thanksgiving and before Christmas. Uh, there was also a uh, Thai Law fundraiser they had, and we had signed Thai Law footballs that we were able to sell and raise money that way. Uh, through them, they also, uh, we were sponsored with uh, Tito's uh, Vodka, and they uh, with, had a drink special uh, at 110. Maybe some of you bought that drink. Uh, that money went to us here at uh, CSF. So they've been really great in, in helping us uh, you know, get back into uh, having fundraisers again, things that we haven't had in the last two years. Um, in addition to partner partnering with Apex, uh, this year we also were awarded an additional uh, grant from the Brigham Trust. Uh, it was, uh, we've had one from them where they've been giving us $1,000 for 12 years for a scholarship. This year we uh, got a grant for $6,000 and in using that money we have been able to award two $3,000 scholarships. So really trying to help those who have a need uh, be able to fund their education. In addition to that, we also, um, there was an anonymous donor who um, approached us and really was interested in helping those that are at uh, both Marlboro and Assabet, they have a program where students uh, can take classes at Quinsigamon uh, Community College, and then that can be used to uh, help them start their way into uh, their college uh, education and get credit. And, and this donor wanted to help them continue, because a lot of them, they would take these classes, but then still couldn't afford even to go to Quinsigamon. So um, that donor um, will sponsor two scholarships for full tuition for the, full, for the two years at Quinsigamon. Um, and if we don't have any applicants, which this year, unfortunately, we didn't have any applicants from that program, um, the money is still, they're, they're still providing us the money and we can then award that to others who, who have need. And so this year we have uh, two scholarships that are going for $6,000 to high school graduates. So huge, uh, huge help for them. In addition to that, we still, we've been able to maintain some of our fundraisers during the pandemic. Um, we had uh, one that was near and dear to uh, Deb Jeru's heart. We had our Scholar Bowl, our Super Bowl squares, um, which uh, sold out, I think, in record time this year. But it's always a great fundraiser. Um, it nets $5,000 for us for fundraising every year. So if you're ever approached, uh, buy, buy your square. Um, we also um, went back into the archives and brought back the Scholar Bee this year um, and, and had that uh, in, in April. Uh, with regards to um, how many scholarships we are awarding, the last two years we awarded uh, in 2020 and 2021 to 81 uh, different recipients, uh, totaling $105,000. Uh, and this year we will be uh, awarding uh, to 35 new applicants as well as nine renewable scholarships. Renewable scholarships are one that when we award, they're given the money for four years or two years. Um, and this year we will be awarding $88,000 in scholarships. Um, we've also, in, in the last uh, year, we did have uh, some losses. Uh, one loss was uh, Ruth Bolin, who was one of the early uh, contributors and really believed in CSF. Um, and sponsored. I, th I think she's had one of the first endowments uh, that we had. She passed away in, in January. And then we lost um, Deb Jeru last November. And she was a, a strong supporter of CSF, um, was always here helping and 
helping out. And with that, I hand over to Maggie, I don't know where she is, who will say a few words. Thank you. Um, I'm really sorry that I looked at the program because it said tribute to Deb Giroux. So um, I'm not quite sure why I'm standing here tonight to talk about Deb, but if you've lived in Marlboro for any period of time, there's no way that you don't know Deb Giroux. There are so many people within Marlboro whose life she touched or has touched and they were never even aware of it. To describe Deb would be to write about a hurricane with the perfect amount of power and a smile. Uh, personally, I can't even tell you the year I met Deb. It was a long time ago. For many in this room, it was a really long time ago. But there's so much history that everybody has. Life blurs it all together because in the end, it was fun. And we did it because we wanted to, and we did it and worked all together because we cared. The first real thing that I got involved with Deb with was the starting of the Marlboro Youth Girls Softball Association, which Erin is turning red over there. Um, we both couldn't figure out why the girls couldn't play softball in Marlboro. My daughter played Little League Baseball until she was 13, and we said this is silly, so Deb and I got together one night with a couple of people, a few guys, and said we need to start a league. That started. Aaron and Megan both played on Hair Razors, which was the first official team in the league. Uh, young Scotty worked with my son, who had never played football before, until he went into high school took him under his wing at a camp at Holy Cross College, came home on the first day and I said, how was practice? How was the camp? And he said, Scotty's a beast and I'm gonna be just like him. I said, all right, we're in trouble. We all enjoyed so much time together. Most of it's social, always working on a project, always trying to help the students of Marlboro. She had her Marlboro crew, which was many of us in this room, and she also had the semi-secret crew up at the lake. As CSF was changing, reorganizing, becoming bigger, it was her turn to step in as president. She pulled me aside and said, I don't want it. You do, don't you? I said, ah, Deb. And she said, I said, it's your turn to take over. And she said, I don't want it. I promise I will do anything that you ask me to do. I will help you in any way possible. I don't want to be president. So for 10 years, I was president. She was right here. Um, we had cow tipping, fabulous successful golf tournaments, spelling bees, trivia, brown bag socials for adults only, the uh, Scholar Bowl for the Super Bowl, we, you name it, we tried it. Some worked, some didn't. Pencils on the side corner didn't work so well, so we just kept the pencils and handed them out to the schools. Deb was always the hardest worker and the worst person on a computer. <laughs> I can't tell how many times I was on the phone with Scott He's on his computer, I'm on my computer, we're trying to make a form, we're trying to make it work. She could fill out the forms great, but not press go. It has been a rough few years. Deb's illness, COVID, the feeling of helplessness for so many people, but for Deb, the fight endured, and she continued, even not feeling well, to help CSF. Her sister Donna, and her two sisters by other mothers, Mal and Margie, were her dream team. So much shared between this women, their spouses, children, so many years, so much of life. It's an honor for me to be here tonight to talk about Deb. There's not a person in this room who knew Deb and loved Deb who would not want her here with us tonight. Her infectious energy, 
smile and laugh is missed. She was a Marlboro girl to the end, proud of her roots, the love she had for Scott, Scotty and Erin, proud grandmother, and for those of us in this room who had the pleasure and just honor to be her friend. And I always like quotes, so I just have this one to end with. Some people come into your life for a season because your turn has come to share, grow, or learn. They bring you an experience of peace or make you laugh. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it, it's real, but it's only for a season. Thank you. I can attest to Deb's not liking the computer. And I, I will say, I think the best was when she used to give me the money for the uh, Super Bowl square. She had all these little, like, note, little post-it notes on it who, on who paid. And I said to her, it works for you, it works for me. I don't need it on a computer. <laughs> all right, uh, tonight we have a, a guest speaker. Uh, Congresswoman Lori Trahan is here. Um, Congresswoman Lori Trahan proudly serves Massachusetts 3rd District. Growing up in a working class family in Lowell, Massachusetts, Lori learned the principles of sacrifice, hard work, and grit. The first in her family to graduate college, Lori earned a scholarship to play Division I volleyball at Georgetown University. After college, she joined former Congressman Marty Meehan's staff, working her way up to Chief of Staff. After serving Massachusetts for nearly 10 years, Lori, Lori moved to the private sector as the only female executive at a tech company and later a co-founder of a woman-owned and operated consulting firm focused on elevating women to leadership positions. Lori successfully ran for Congress in 2018, motivated to return to public service after seeing the Trump administration's gridlock and lack of accountability. Sworn in alongside a historically diverse class of new members, Lori immediately got to work for the people of the 3rd District. Now as a member of the powerful House Committee on Energy and Commerce, Lori is an advocate for the 3rd District residents, working to expand access to affordable, quality health care, tackle climate change, protect kids online, fight disinformation, and more. When the coronavirus pandemic hit in March of 2020, Lori rolled up her sleeves and got to work. She secured hundreds of millions of dollars in federal relief funding to keep workers and businesses afloat, ensure hospitals and health centers remained open, and shortened the Commonwealth's road to recovery. As vaccines were being distributed, Lori worked around the clock to make sure individual communities had the resources and support necessary to get shots into arms and save lives. As families across the third district recover, Lori is working to ensure that no one is left behind. Please welcome Lori Trahan. Put this up here. Well, hello everyone, how are you tonight? We gotta like liven this room up. Uh, it's too quiet in here. Um, so that introduction, it just feels longer than normal. Uh, when really, it, what I wanna say is to the 35 students, your young adults here, I'm just like you. Uh, or at least I you know, was just like you. Uh, and it, didn't, it doesn't actually feel like that long ago. Um, but I do think it's an honor uh, for me to be here. This is the 32nd annual Citizen Scholarship Foundation of Marlboro Dollars for Scholars Award Night. Uh, and I do want to thank Jen and Diane and Mary Jo, Mary Lou, who I haven't seen in ages, Joe Trella, uh, and everyone here at CSF who worked so hard to make tonight possible uh, and for the opportunity to be part of such an exciting uh, event. It is nothing quite like coming to a community that rallies around the next generation and making sure that they're dipping in uh, to their, you know, their resources, their pockets, their business community to, to give the tools to kind of pay it forward for the next generation. And this community does that exceptionally well. Uh, so I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to say uh, a few words about Deb Giroux, uh, who clearly dedicated her life uh, to this community, and she devoted so much of her time to the important work that this organization does for so many young adults. 
Uh, as we heard already uh, this evening, it's no secret to anyone uh, in this room just how much of an impact Debbie made on CSF and the many, many students that she helped along the way. You know, I know that her passing this past November left, you know, a crater-sized uh, hole on so many of your hearts, um, but I think she'd be really proud of everyone here tonight uh, because you've proven that the best way to honor Deb is, and the life that she lived and the legacy that she leaves behind, is to carry it forward and to continue her work by supporting the brilliant young leaders that are sitting here today uh, and the many more who will benefit from CSF down the road. So I just have to, just, the 35 and plus eight, uh, plus nine, I think, can you just raise your hand? I just want to know who I'm talking to. Who are our, okay, like just a little bit higher in the air? <laughs> like, like your parents would raise it because they're so proud of you? Okay, excellent. Well, it's wonderful to be with all of you especially because tonight is a celebration of your hard work, of your dedication uh, and your achievements. Uh, this is, each of you has exhibited so much perseverance, the grit that not just to succeed academically and through your extracurriculars, but really to set a standard of excellence for yourself. I know what that requires, day in and day out, the obstacles that pop up along the way, uh, the setbacks that you, that you face that could derail you know, your, uh, your ambitious path that you've set upon. Uh, and like many of you, I didn't grow up in a family that had a, a lot of money. I grew up in Lowell. I shared uh, one bathroom with my three sisters. And I went to public schools my whole life while, you know, working since age 11. I was a newspaper carrier. I was a waitress. I was a counselor. You name it, I had every job uh, under the sun. And my parents, my dad was a union iron worker. My mother juggled multiple part-time minimum wage jobs uh, to help, you know, provide for my, my three sisters and me. And college was a dream of mine. Uh, you know, I talked about it a lot uh, around the house, and I would see my, my parents sort of recoil when I would start naming all the colleges that I was going to apply to. Uh, because even 30 years ago, it was, it was a costly decision, uh, and it was one that was really out of reach for so many families like mine. Um, but I knew I was going to achieve my dream. Uh, I, I knew I wanted to go to Georgetown. I also knew I wanted to go to the School of Foreign Service. I wanted to be uh, in the diplomatic corps. I had it all planned for myself. Uh, but I also knew I was going to have to do uh, a large part of that lift on my own. Uh, so with a little luck uh, and a lot of hard work, which you're no stranger to, uh, I earned a volleyball scholarship uh, to, go, to go to Georgetown. And even with that scholarship, I remember sitting in a room just like this one uh, because I still had to pay for books. I still had all these incidentals that are also very costly. And I remember my own community rallying around me and my you know, fellow classmates, graduates, uh, and pitching in to make sure that we had those scholarships um, that we could apply for, that we could you know, take with us just to take that edge off. Because when you're living paycheck to paycheck or with college, if you're a first time you know, first generation graduate, every little bit helps. Uh, and it does take the anxiety off of thinking about the price tag uh, of college every, every waking hour. Um, there were a lot of classmates of mine, as well as students who came after me, who had similar childhoods, they had similar dreams, they worked just as hard as I did, but they weren't able to go to the college of their choice. In fact, many of them weren't able to go to college at all. Um, but like organizations like this one, organizations like CSF, they are changing that for so many students uh, across the Commonwealth, certainly uh, here, in, here in Marlboro. They've put in the work um, and they wanna make sure that they, that you all get to pursue your education at the next level. We know that you're doing this at a uniquely challenging time. Uh, as we emerge from a two-year pandemic that had costs far beyond you know, the health and financial consequences that we know all too well, 
it is a testament to this organization, the board members, uh, the many supporters and businesses who contribute to this fund, that we're here again for the 32nd year in a row awarding these critically important scholarships. So I just want to thank everyone for making that possible. Uh, and I know it, we couldn't even list them all because there are so many. It's not just the folks here at CSF or even the students themselves. Because getting to this point, we know, truly takes uh, a village. And at the heart of that village is your family. Uh, the fact that every student being awarded one of these scholarships is so impressive and so talented is not news to your loved ones. Uh, your families have supported you through thick and thin. They believed in you even when, when you didn't believe in yourself. They've had your backs every time one of those setbacks popped up or one of those obstacles uh, or ounce of doubt perhaps creeped in. And the young adult that you are today is because of their love. It's because of their encouragement and their support. And I hope you know just how proud they are for everything that you've done to get here tonight. And I know that because I had the same thing in my home growing up. Uh, my parents had that same pride when I got um, my scholarship that your parents have for you right now. Uh, and I also know that it's the love and it's the values that they instilled in you that will propel you forward uh, in your studies, in your personal life, and eventually in your careers. Whether you're entering college for the first time this fall, entering your final year of school, or somewhere in between, your future is bright because of the values and because of your village. Tonight is the latest, latest example of that being true. Now, here's the part where I tell you just how much we need you to succeed. And I'm not doing that to add pressure to your studies or to make it seem like it's all on you as an individual, because it's not. But we are at a fragile moment in the course of our nation's history. The road ahead sometimes feels intimidating. The challenges we face sometimes feel daunting. But looking out at you all, at a talented, group of young leaders uh, and seeing so many like-minded graduates and students from across our district, my, the district I represent, it actually gives me a ton of faith that our future is bright. It gives me confidence that this generation, your generation, will help chart a course for our community, for our commonwealth, and our country that we can all be proud of. One where, rather than shying away from the crises we face or kicking the can down the road, we step up and we act with urgency to solve problems. And I have that faith and that confidence because of you, because of your personal histories, your work ethic that have, that's proven that you're not just ready to step up, but you're willing and able to do so. That's what we need in this moment, and it's why I stand here in front of you, excited about our future. So I wanna congratulate you all on your tremendous achievement. I wanna wish you great luck in the weeks, months, years ahead. And remember, as you look around this room, you have an entire village behind you every step of the way, myself included. So thank you all again for allowing me to be part of this and, uh, and good night. Thank you. All right, without further ado, we'll uh, announce our recipients. Um, Marnie Farrell will uh, come up to announce the recipients. Marnie is our uh, chair of our scholarship committee and Mary Lou Vanzini, uh, current co-president and uh, founder of uh, CSF of Marlboro, uh, will be helping to distribute the awards. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, Mary Lou and I represent the five foot four and under presenters. <laughs> um, so can everybody hear me OK in the back? I have four kids. I yell a lot. <laughs> Um, I'll be calling up the recipients to receive their awards. Families, if you want to come up and take a picture or anything, I'm going to be going just as the program is. So if you want to follow along, you can kind of strategize your movement. 
That'd be great. Um, and if I may um, just have a moment to say just a few words. Uh, Diane spoke about the funding provided to these students, and it's undeniably a testament to the generosity of this community. I'm a numbers person, so I just want to throw out a few numbers for you. Marlboro's population is 40,000, and the median age is 37. 92% have a high school degree or higher. 48% have at least an associate's degree. Top occupations are executives, managers, sales, administrative support, business and financial operations, and production workers. Work distribution of the 37,000 employees in Marlboro is 72% white collar, 27% blue collar. 40 members of the community serve in the armed forces. There are 2,500 businesses. 64% of these businesses have one to four employees, 11% have 20 plus. In 2021, the leading industries in Marlboro were manufacturing, professional, scientific and technical services, retail, healthcare, and social services. 40,000 jobs available among those top industries. Median yearly income of 86,000 is slightly more than the state average and about 29% more than the national average. 57% of the households own their own home. We are Hispanic, Black, White, American Indian, Asian, Pacific Islander, multi-race, and other. So, students, in addition to the accomplishments you've noted on your applications, the academic awards, athletic achievements, work experience, extracurricular activities, please know that what you also bring to the table is growing up in a community that is diverse in industry, ethnicity, occupations, income, and education. You live in a community that believes in you and your journey. Wear it like a badge. Be kind, be accountable, be honest, be appreciative. Enjoy the wins and learn from the losses. Enjoy the ride. Congratulations. Ready? I'm, I'm ready. Um, some people might want to. Those people who have endowments and are awarding a, a um, scholarship tonight, when your scholarship is called, if you would like to present it, please feel free to come up and do it. Okay? Thank you. We're gonna start with the graduating high school students. These students can attend Marlboro High School, AMSA, and Assabet Valley. They just have to be a Marlboro resident. James A. Smith Scholarship, Bessie and William P. Cooper Scholarship goes to Marcus Chrysophides, who attends Marlboro High and will be attending Bridgewater State University. Marcus also received the CSF General Scholarship. The Colonial Garden Club of Marlboro Scholarship and a CSF General Scholarship. Ethan Vidham, Marlboro High, will be attending University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Jean A. Benson Memorial Scholarship, Kevin George, Assabet Valley High School, will be attending University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. The Ann Taboyka Memorial Scholarship and the CSF General Scholarship goes to Nicole Barros, Marlboro High, will be attending University of Massachusetts in Amherst. The Katz Family Scholarship and the CSF General Scholarship goes to Joshua Irons from Marlboro High. He will be attending the University of Massachusetts in Amherst.
Sandra E. Gustin Memorial Scholarship goes to Alyssa Craig from AMSA. She will be attending the University of New Hampshire. The, the Bernadette LaFollette Memorial Scholarship goes to Aidan Grocky from Marlboro High, who will be attending George Washington University. The Bernadette LaFollette Memorial Scholarship also goes to Sydney Johnston from AMSA, who will be attending Syracuse University. <laughs> Linda Schapa Memorial Scholarship and the CSF General Scholarship goes to Olivia Bogle from AMSA, who will be attending Clark University. The Joseph P. and Shirley A. Griffin Scholarship goes to Adam Hussein from Marlboro High and will be attending Yale University. The Seymour and Mary Benedetto Memorial Scholarship and CSF General Scholarship goes to Meredith Bidham, Marlboro High, who will be attending University of Massachusetts Lowell. The CSF General Scholarship, funded by an anonymous donor, goes to Cam Camden Gennetti of Marlboro High, who will be attending Assumption University, and Mariana Andrade from Marlboro High, attending the University of Massachusetts, Boston. The CSF General Scholarship goes to Anna Silva, Marlboro High, who will be attending Bridgewater State University. There are two renewable scholarships we give to high school students. The first one is the Mary Lou Vanzini Scholarship given to Velasca Shohalan from Marlboro High, the University of Massachusetts, Boston. The second one uh, is the Hiriam and Eleanor Tupper Memorial Scholarship. Goes to Manuela Kawasaki from Marlboro High, who will be attending University of Massachusetts in Amherst. The next group of students are our college students that have applied and will be receiving scholarships. Marlboro Girl Scouts, Mary Louise and August Max Teasing Memorial Scholarship goes to Christina Bibinski, who is at Boston College. Francis J. and Ruth Boland Scholarship 
goes to Kayla Cook, who is at Curry College. Barbara and Thomas Eatry Scholarship and CSF General Scholarship goes to Kristen Perdue, who is at Fitchburg State University. Do you want a picture with Mary Lou? <laughs> Brigham Trust Scholarship 2022 goes to Emma Fadul, University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and Alexandria Perry, University of New England. Yeah. Wonderful. Brigham Trust Scholarship and CSF General Scholarship goes to Angelina Torrio, Sacred Heart University. <laughs> Hiriam and Eleanor Tupper Memorial Scholarship goes to Sophia Warren at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. The Hiriam and Eleanor Tupper Memorial Scholarship goes to Nathan Crisofuli at Stonehill College. The Hiriam and Eleanor Tupper Memorial Scholarship also goes to Thomas Crisofuli at Curry College in Milton. The Deb Giroux Memorial Scholarship goes to Brandon Anwe Natoli at Framingham State University. Robert Rennie Memorial Scholarship and the CSF General Scholarship goes to Emma O'Connell, Johnson & Wales University. <laughs> Scott Rizzuti Memorial Scholarship and CSF General Scholarship goes to Kyle Cook, University of New Hampshire. The CSF General Scholarship, funded by 110 Grill, goes to Cole D'Onofrio, who attends the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. The CSF General Scholarship, funded by Apex, goes to Alaya Nisbet, University of Massachusetts, Amherst. CSF General Scholarship, funded by Aviva Trattoria, goes to Reginald Warren at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. <laughs> the 
CSF General Scholarship goes to Allison Silva at Carnegie Mellon University. The CSF General Scholarship goes to Gabriel Angelito at Framingham State University. The CSF General Scholarship goes to Elizabeth Grasso at Bentley University. <laughs> CSF General Scholarship goes to Sophia Turio at Sacred Heart University. So uh, we have the last, um, is the prior year renewable scholarships. So uh, these are, um, a couple people received these earlier and they just renew for four years, just as they say. Uh, I'll just read their names. McKenna Noble, 2021 Mary Lou Vanzini Scholarship. Hillary Lincoln, 2020 Mary Lou Vanzini Scholarship. Emma Coy, 2019 Mary Lou Vanzini Scholarship. Taylor Pantridge, 2021 Hiram and Eleanor Tupper Scholarship. Favor Nakayazi, 2020 Hiram and Eleanor Tupper Scholarship. Samantha Lucero, 2019 Hiram and Eleanor Tupper Scholarship. Joelle Noble, 2020 CSF Renewable Scholarship. Paul Alcantor Suarez, 2021 Quinswigaman Community College Scholarship. Ethan Dahlstrom, 2021 Quinswigaman Community College Scholarship. <laughs> Congratulations to the students. Appreciate all of your hard work. Diane? Thank you, Marnie. Um, just in closing, uh, I'd like to uh, thank our volunteers. We wouldn't be uh, who we are without the support that we get from our ma many volunteers. So I'd like to, obviously, you've met Marnie, um, Miriam, who's over on the side, uh, Marilyn, raise your hand, Marilyn, <laughs> uh, Mary Sarah, uh, Joe uh, Trella, and uh, Jack. Raise your hand, guys. <laughs> um, it's, it's the support of uh, all of our volunteers that has allowed us to be here for 32 years. Um, I'd like to, to thank them for all the efforts that they, they give us. Um, in addition, I want to remind all of the recipients, we, as you can see, you're here, it's not just high school. We give out uh, scholarships to, to college students, so apply again next year. We also, it's not just when you're in college, if you go on to get your master's or doctorate or whatever, apply again. Not you know, guaranteed that you're going to get a scholarship, but you know, you've already st uh, started, you have a profile, the, the, most of the work's done. So I'd, I'm amazed every year, I feel like we're pulling teeth to get people to apply for these scholarships. I'm like, we have money to give. Please, <laughs> make, make, make it tough on us to, to have to make uh, tough decisions. Um, so please, please uh, um, apply again next year. Um, also, I'd like to, you know, we're, we're here in the community. Um, now that you know who we are, uh, please come support our events. Um, if anyone is interested in getting involved, we're, more, we're always looking for new members. So, you know, talk to one of the, the volunteers, ask us what uh, you can do. And, and please, if you, if you see us, you know, 
if we're having a road race, if we're having a scholar bee, if we're having a trivia night, you know, stop by, help us out. Thank you all for coming. Thank <laughs> you.